campaign. Outnumbered over time. <laughs> and for those who are following the uh, the color wheel, we kind of have our traditional colors on today because we're popping the, the yellow. It yes. is a little bit of a turquoisey blue a on our larger. whenever you know our logo. Yeah. Yeah. We got the very strong cherry red, and then I have on cream. Do you remember we did a segment on this show in our first couple weeks that we launched about? Wearing red threatens other women or something oh, like that. Oh, yeah. yeah, I do. I think I was on that episode. That was great. That's <laughs> right. That, though. I'm it not sure right. I ever got that. Okay, yeah. Yeah. My favorite Melissa though. taught me something, too, yes. from her days on Little House on the Prairie. Well, but actually, this is from daytime soaps, where they had they assigned the color every day, much like, you know, here. Oh, yes. Of, but, yeah, blue. But it was whoever was the dominant, most special person, highest paid person wore blue, royal blue. That was, mm. like, the color you wanted to wear. Red was the second best, and then yellow, and then it went on from there. Wow. But those were well, the I know that when I wear white. Okay, but That's members so members of uh, the presidential press pool covering Ronald Reagan quickly figured out uh, the ladies that is that his favorite color was red, and if women were wearing red, he was more likely to call on them. And so uh, by the end of his first year, a majority of the women. <laughs> really? <laughs> the first lady, like a, that was first like thing that color was red. Absolutely right. It, it looked like a sea of right. popes out there. Red. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Um, or like great. a Rajneeshi <laughs> commune. Uh, we're on Facebook That's Live right now too, and people are commenting on you they like you oh good yeah we That's like you too i don't mean to make it sound like a surprise <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's like you won't believe this <laughs> no so uh we had a lot going on in our show today who, who do you think donald trump is going to pick for vp i i really don't know because a long time ago i gave up predicting anything to do with donald trump mm, really yeah. i still think it's going to be newt mm, a lot of people it, think you know, that or Mike Pence? I, think, I mean, I think it, it new. It just it feels so like Throwback Thursday. I know. You know, I mean, it feels so retro to yeah. go with new. But Trump you is know. retro. Trump is 80s, yeah. new is 90s. Yeah. And they're yeah. both they combined to be so yeah, now. But, <laughs> That's right. No. no, Mike Pence. I know we didn't even mention that during he's the segment. Deep yogurt. And, and Mike Pence. No, I think he's, he's what, not. You know? Not you know, a chance. The one thing that one thing that bugged me that Newt said in the last election. Maybe the Dan Quayle of 2016. Which, by the way, I had an obsession with Dan Quayle. Did you? Big time. Wow. That explains a lot. Oh. Okay. Love of potatoes. Interesting. Love Did of Dan think? Quayle. Oh, oh goodness. My goodness wow. gracious. Okay. Oh, same, when, Does when husband I... Dave know of this? Oh, yeah. He knew about it because when I started dating Dave, <laughs> I had a picture of the official portrait of uh, the no, vice president, and Mrs. Quayle, it. on my bedroom wall, and I took a picture of me and, and put it on Marilyn's face. <laughs> no. Wow. And I left it there the entire time. he's still married, yo. It, if, if, that doesn't, love. if that doesn't scream stalker, I don't know what does. I wasn't a stalker. No, it, I never it, met him. I just talked to him on the phone once. You're kidding me. It was great. <laughs> what did you guys talk about? Across from his we house. talked about snowboarding. Wow. Yeah. I'm Gosh. speechless. And the restraining you know, it's, it's interesting because when People I woke up this morning, I said, I'm going to learn something new about Kennedy. <laughs> <laughs> like I knew. <laughs> wow, that's, oh. that's okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what? My mom, okay. my mom tried to justify it. Uh, a member of the media asked her about my obsession with the former vice president. And she said, well, they are both from Indiana. <laughs> Aww. Okay. Okay. I used to write poems about him. Wow. Okay. Now, you are familiar with the stalker legislation, yeah, no. right? I'm, I'm okay. actually drafting in my head um, the restraining order. He's oh, nowhere within teasing. 200 yards of me right now, so we're good. <laughs> All right, so that piece of paper back Kennedy, now. Christine wants to know, I, wa I want to know what Kennedy meant by saying we are in trouble if Christie gets AG. I think that Chris Christie, uh, as Attorney General, is very bad on civil liberties, and I think he is going to crack down on things like um, free speech and freedom of movement, and he's also bad on marijuana. He uh, he has said that if he ever sends to any sort of uh, federal prosecutorial level, that he will certainly prosecute uh, the marijuana federal laws because it is still a highly scheduled and very illegal drug. Although a, a critical mass of states have decided that either recreational or medical marijuana is appropriate. And you know, since you bring that up, I wanted to make a point about medical marijuana. There, you know, there, I read an article by the biggest grower of medical marijuana in the country, and he said he had grown a strain that had all of the cannabinols, so it was great yeah. medicinally, yeah. and it had zero THC, so you couldn't get high, but you got all the health benefits. He said, I can't give it away. 
So it just kind of undercuts the whole argument of we need this for medicine. Nobody, no, that's, that's wants, actually, that's, nobody wants to buy it. That's certainly not true. And if you go to dispensaries in Colorado and Oregon and Washington State, well, they Washington, at least have low DC, THC. Alaska and and California, uh, no, there, there are a lot of benefits. And in fact, the cannabinoids that are so low in THC are very helpful for she conditions like uh, anti-inflammatory yeah. and yeah, but why Medicare. Don't, why don't states that you, why Medicare don't states that has been um, paying for so many drugs for seniors, including anti-inflammatories, uh, anti-anxiety medication, arthritis medication, so many uh, cannabis containing either edibles, marijuana itself that is uh, smoked, or some of the drugs that have been derived from it are replacing those at much less well, I'm not less disagreeing cost. with you. No, oh, I'm not disagreeing with you. I, mean, the, I, the, the, yeah. the I agree that marijuana, that weed has tremendous amounts of medicinal benefit. I agree yeah. with that. What I disagree with is that that's the reason most of the public wants it. Yeah. What I'm saying is, why don't mm. states who say, you know what, we want to approve it, but only for medicine, mm -hmm. just approve the strain that doesn't have THC. Because the oh, why do they? Why, why? Because she's, there are other conditions that, that, that is helpful. where you can benefit from THC. But there, you know, for example, there was a, a young girl who had an inordinate amount of seizures, like dozens of seizures every day, mm -hmm. sure. who was only helped by a certain kind of hemp oil in New Jersey, and the governor made it so difficult for her family to get that, and that was the only thing that kept her seizures at bay. I mean, it was yeah. well, it he was didn't miraculous. do it specifically for her. Like we, we don't. He certainly didn't help her out when he was confronted by her family, well, specifically okay. her father. Mm -hmm. um, by the way, somebody, Emily, chimed in and said... He was very nice when he was on the couch. Uh, <laughs> Melissa was on Little House. Okay, a little, yes. Okay. <laughs> yes, she was. Care to... Brunette, that's what's confusing. <laughs> yeah. um, 9627 Jean, because I asked the question the on the live chat. I said... Christy, Flynn, Gingrich, I kind of listed people who might yeah. be on the short list with Donald Trump. 9627 Jean says, Flynn or Newt is great. Either will help in certain areas. Yeah. No, that's so true. I mean, like when you look at the different candidates that are being batted around here for VP, it's that they all offer some sort of strength and then they have a whole host of drawbacks and it kind of <laughs> what it is that Trump is trying to fix here. I mean, I was so disappointed that Mike Flynn made that answer, which I mean, he, he sort of, he was stumbling all over himself in that answer, which is not like him, or, you know. Like I said, Republican I've seen men just never freestyle on abortion. They yes. should. They should never don't wing it on abortion. Just don't no. do it. There or are ways answer. of answering concisely. Yeah, but he's not a Republican. He's a Democrat. No, no. Yeah, no. But that's here's, true. Here's someone who wants to be the vice the president vice to pick president. Yeah. the presumptive Republican. You should nominee. be prepared on. <laughs> you should be prepared. A lot of a lot of things. That's a very obvious question that's coming your way. If you're even thinking yeah. about possibly being VP, it wasn't a surprise to him yeah. that he, when he was out there on the Sunday shows that this might come his way. He should have been prepared for that question. That was really disappointing because I've seen him speak for more than an hour, you know, at a, at a private symposium where he really laid out terrifically mm -hmm. what the problem is, how it's expanded, why we're in trouble, what should be done, what we've missed and what we could do now to contain and battle radical Islam. It was the most complete plan, the most yeah. comprehensive, yeah. the most effective thing I've heard anyone say. And the blatant I'll, I'll flip flop you, made it worse. I'll tell you something well, else about General Flynn. Um, oh, that's yeah. true. In Sanders' home city last year, I <laughs> attended an event, the uh, the Navy SEALs Foundation event yes. that, that's there every year. And uh, Condoleezza Rice was our, our guest speaker that night. I am seated. Mm -hmm. And there were just a ton of, there was a sea of blue. There were so many officers in this room. It's the best and, event. Yeah, it's a beautiful event. And General Flynn got up and spoke to these officers. I mean, you talk about where this country is right now. We were all in tears. Mm, like Rahm yeah. Emanuel was there. I mean, there were Democrats who were there. It was, it was extremely moving. Yeah. So he may not have been ready on that answer, as you point out. But there are a lot of other gifts that he brings to the table. I wonder, and I don't know, I've never worked on a campaign, so I, I would defer to others who would know this. When you know that you might be vetted for this sort of thing, does a campaign maybe reach out to you and say, we're going to lend you a few tools in case you're asked about certain issues? You know what I mean? Do they have if they want you to be successful, to they that? would. They absolutely know. would. If they, if they want you to succeed. Great question. And there are reporters that you are going to interface with, especially on a Sunday morning news show. It's a big show. Yeah. It's a big venue. Mm -hmm. right? He might have needed some, because yeah. you've seen him speak about the strategy for yeah, ISIS. I've seen him shore up the men and women in blue. I mean, clearly there's some areas where he's got expertise. Yeah. And is a great and talented and eloquent speaker that really wraps you. But the media also isn't going to put him in a position to succeed. They, they no, want well, to no, undermine Donald Trump. 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 Yeah. And I say they. Yeah. We're all part of the media. Yeah. Are but we? there is a way to ask a question and a follow-up, and, and you know, <laughs> just, say, I just wasn't ready. What's going on? Is yeah. it Friday? <laughs> um, yeah. So. It's Monday, Monday. <laughs>
Ooh. Just a week from the What's going on of the on RNC? Facebook Live, by the way? Sandra's got that up. She, she's rolling with that. <laughs> I'm, I'm kicking it old school on the live chat. More than 8,000 people What are you, what are you today? most it's looking crazy. forward to in Cleveland? M- me? Either one. You take it. <clears throat> All the surprises. Because <laughs> aren't there going to be so many? Be a lot of surprises. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there yeah. are. Yeah. Um, does the shooting in Dallas give you any pause? Does it, does it make so, you So, yeah, you I mean security measures? Yeah. And I, I talked to the, um, the guy orchestrating it all this morning, um, and he, he made a very interesting point. After the attacks that we've seen at airports recently around the, around the world, um, how they're attacking outside of se- secured areas, mm-hmm. Well, that concerns me about the the unsecured areas outside of the stadium, things like that. And so they're obviously bringing in extra. I mean, they're they're bringing in local police from all over the state yeah. to yeah. help them out with this. Everybody. It's a huge effort. Fifty thousand people are expected in Cleveland. Lots so one thing that like my that. dad, the military guy, said was, "Pack your PC, watch your six. It's not time for political correctness. If you see something, do something." Mm. Or run. Stand up and shout. <laughs> well, do something. Right. Yeah. Right. I'm looking forward to just going and seeing the great city of Cleveland that sits on that beautiful lake. Yeah. It's be- Good luck if you see any of it. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> She's so optimistic. Um, great to have you. Always fun. Come Thank back you. anytime. Thanks for bringing the sunshine. Thanks, Judge. Usually when he comes from Florida, he brings rain. That's <laughs> true. I'm remembered for that. That's the one thing I'm remembered for. You don't think I'm going to get outside, huh? <laughs>